This is a Class Olsen part number 366704 battery powered PIR sensor uh, LED strip. So it's an entirely automatic little cupboard light. It's got a one meter warm white LED strip and uh, you just tack it onto anywhere and it'll automatically turn on when you wave your hand in front of it. A uh, very practical little device and I like the idea. However, I've done some testing on this thing and if we apply power to it without even turning it on, you'll see that it's drawing three milliamps just sitting around. And that means that you're going to be draining your batteries in about two weeks even if you never ever light this thing up and I think that's entirely unacceptable. You can't use this with non-rechargeable batteries and even with rechargeable batteries you're going to be swapping batteries so often that you're going to run very short in patience very quickly. So uh, I figured we'd try and remedy the issue. And here is the schematic for the entire device. It's very simple indeed. So the uh, part of the circuit that is causing the high current draw issue is this voltage regulator right here. Because uh, the power supply, which is 6 volts derived from the 4 AAA batteries going into it, are just uh, going through a 1K resistor into a 3 volt Zener Zener diode, uh, which is providing the regulated power supply to the AL412 uh, PIR chip, which is providing the light sensing automatics. And this circuit is inherently very inefficient since we've just basically just got a voltage divider here. There has to be a current flowing through this resistor to ground in order to create this stable 3 volt rail. And uh, to top it off, the current needs to be sufficiently high to always power this chip no matter what, whether or not it's actually doing anything. And that's a very cheap dirty way of doing it which works excellent if you're running something off of a mains but not off of a battery. So the way I've intended to remedy that is by just installing one of these. These are a, a simple little linear uh, low dropout 3.3 uh, volt uh, regulated chips and these have a quiescent current of uh, specified 68 microamps which is many orders of magnitude better than these 3 milliamps we see uh, with the current circuit. I have checked the datasheet for the AL412 PIR sensor and this is specified for an idle power consumption of 65 microamps. So real of the 3 milliamps we're seeing through this 1K resistor is entirely unjustified. So if we have a quick look at the rest of the circuit, there really isn't anything here which would cause the high idle power draw and the rest of the circuit works just fine. So from the 6 volt power rail, we've got it going straight to the positive end of the 5 volt LED string and it's going through a couple of switches which enables you to run the strip manually with the switches on the board there. There's very high impedances here, 10k, 100k class resistors, nothing's going to draw any current. The switching device is a little tiny SOT13 MOSFET which isn't going to draw anything idly and there's going to be no current flowing through the LEDs when it's powered off. So it is a rather nice circuit all of this, I don't mind it at all save for the power supply part. So with no further ado, let's replace this thing with something a bit more modern. Alright, and here you can see the board and uh, this is the power supply circuit we're interested in. We've obviously got the uh, passive infrared sensor module there with its time setting resistor but this is the power supply. So we've got a positive terminal of a battery coming in here feeding through the 1K resistor into capacitor into the Zena diode into another capacitor and this plane here is our stabilised 3 volt rail. So what I'm planning on doing is taking my little 3 volt regulator, we've got we've got the input on this pin here and the output there with ground in the middle. So I think I'm just gonna tack that on right there and uh, bridge over this resistor and uh, take the Zener diode out of the equation and uh, uh, really that should be about it. Uh, we also need to connect the ground point of the regulator to ground on the battery terminals, but eh, that's a very quick wiring job indeed. So let's just get to it. I'm 
we need to cut the middle leg of the regulator out so that we don't short anything to grind. There we go, it is gone. There we go, that should now work decently. We might have to add a bit of extra capacitance across the input of the regulator in case it's a bit gripey, but we'll have to give it a try first. And here's the moment of truth, let's see if we've improved anything. And we definitely haven't. Something's not working. <laughs> That's of course because I've been an absolute idiot in wiring this up. So if we have a look at the schematic and how I've connected this up, we can notice that I've connected the output of the regulator to the anode of a Zener diode. And the anode of a Zener diode is going straight to ground. So <laughs> what I've done here is I've just uh, removed all the power regulation for the PIR sensor and installed a shorted out 3.3 volt regulator. <laughs> oh, what mistakes. So what I need to do is just to t turn this around slightly so the output is actually going here rather than this point which is ground. Whoops. And there we've got it done up correctly. So you can see I've now removed this resistor and bridge all together and we've got the battery input going to the input of the regulator, the ground going to ground of course, and the output of the regulator going to the output rail which is indeed this track not that track because that would be ground. So now this should work quite well and we should see a drastic improvement in the idle power consumption. Let's give it a go. All right so let's feed some power and see what happens. And that would be an idle power draw of 74 microamps, which is damn near an order of magnitude improvement over what we saw in the stock configuration. Indeed, this is 40 times lower than that, and rather than having to change your batteries once every two weeks, we're now looking at changing your batteries once every four years. So now we've actually moved on to territory where self-discharge is going to be your bigger concern, even if you're using the stock AAA batteries. And I think that is a good result. And here is our new and improved circuit. So as you can see, we've removed the 1K resistor and the 3 volt Zener, removing the leakage path from the battery. And we've pretty much just put our LDO in there instead. We've got the extra uh, ground reference going there, but beyond that, we've just replaced this resistor with a referenced regulator. So in this case, I've used a microchip uh, MCP1755S-3302 E regulator because that's what, just what I happen to have in stock. And in this case, uh, it means that uh, beyond that, just uh, improving the idle power draw, we've actually turned this from something which just runs off of six volts uh, to something which can run off of pretty much three to 12 volts because we no longer have issue of uh, this being a very crude regulator. Uh, if we were to push 12 volts into this uh, in its original configuration, there would be so much current running through this 1K resistor that this Zena would probably burn and short out, or would get a way too high voltage across the AL412 PIR device and burn that. So this thing can pretty much switch any kind of load you want and you could run this off of one lithium cell or two lithium cells or three lithium cells if you wanted just to adjust the light strip accordingly. The original one is of course a 5 volt rated one but I've tested it and it runs fine up to a 2 series lithium pack of 8 to 9 volts thereabout. No worries at all. In the original configuration this strip is running very cool indeed. I've done some rudimentary research on the switching MOSFET here for the LED strip and it is labelled A2 and I haven't been able to find any properly good source for what it might be but I would imagine it's a maybe 
1 to 2 ampere rated transistor at best it is a MOSFET that we can say for certain uh, so I think this is just fine for switching 12 volt loads up to well 500 milliamps going through this thing is probably not going to be a big deal at all so really I could switch a rather beefy LED strip with this thing if you wanted to in my case I'm just going to keep the original strip I don't need anything much bigger I prefer having a long battery runtime so that's about it. Thank you for watching. As far as uh, this uh, class awesome product goes, it's really rather shoddy from the factory, but with this minor modification, we've turned it into something rather good. Uh, the price of 12 euros in a brick and mortar store isn't all that bad, really, all things considered, uh, but uh, you can get these uh, similar modules on uh, eBay or AliExpress for a fraction of the price and if you want to modify it anyway you might as well do it unless you have a specific use for this admittedly rather nice uh, uh, AAA battery case. In fact I might recycle this case for something else. I, I like it. It's pretty stylish. Very clean design. So with that I'll have to thank you for watching. Cheerio!